Pleasant good morning. Can we all take our seats, honorable members and our guests? I want to announce the arrival of the Prime Minister. Oh! 
Let us all rise for the proclamation from the Governor General. A proclamation appointing a day for the holding a session of the National Assembly by His Excellency Sir Calville Nerbert Young, GCMG, MBE, PhD, JP. Governor General of Belize. Whereas Section 83 of the Belize Constitution provides inter alia that there shall be a session of the National Assembly at least once every year and that such session shall be held at such place within Belize and shall begin at such time as the Governor General shall appoint by proclamation published in the Gazette. And whereas the said 83 further provides that the first sitting of each house after the National Assembly has at any time been prorogued or dissolved shall begin at the same time. And whereas the National Assembly was dissolved with effect from the 6th October 2020 and a general election of members of the House of Representatives was held on 11th November 2020, now, therefore, I, Calville, Nerbert, Young, King, Grand Cross of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, Member of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, Governor, Governor General, in exercise of the power conferred upon me by the above-mentioned provisions of the Constitution, do hereby proclaim that a session of the National Assembly shall be held in front of the National Assembly building, Belmopan, on Friday the 11th December, and that the first sitting of the House of Representatives and of the Senate will be held at the said venue beginning at 10 o'clock in the forenoon. Given under my hand the public seal of Belize this seventh day of December 2020.
we can say it. Election of a speaker. I call upon the House to elect a speaker pursuant to standing order number three. Uh, Mr. Clark, I propose to the House, Ms. Valerie Woods, as a speaker of the House of Representatives. I second the nomination. Since there are no other nomination, I will call on the sponsor and the seconder to go with me to fetch Madam Speaker Valerie Woods. Kindly accompany me. Honorable members and invited guests, it is said that our cherished heritage of parliamentary democracy rests in the guardianship of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. I sit here awed by the responsibility, humbled by the honor but resolve to discharge my duties fairly in accordance with the Constitution and standing orders of the House. I thank the Prime Minister and his Cabinet for reposing sufficient confidence in nominating me and to the of the opposition 
and all honorable members for electing me as your speaker. I am only the fourth woman of 12 speakers of the House of Representatives for Belize. However, we must keep in mind that even in more mature parliamentary democracies, such as England's, there has only ever been one woman elected among over 150 speakers. While Belize still has much work to do in getting more women elected to parliament, I recognize that my nomination, and if I may, that of the President of the Senate, Honorable Carolyn Trench Sandiford, signals a recognition of the critical importance of having more women in leadership. Honorable members, as the democratically elected representatives of the people, you are charged with the responsibility of ensuring a government by the people and for the people. The people have entrusted you with the power and responsibility to represent them in the House. Your voices are their voices. Therefore, I must and shall remain ever mindful of this, that honorable must be allowed full scope to represent their constituents. At the same time, I shall, like a fair and fearless referee, be ever vigilant that each and every member discharges his and her duties in accordance with the rules of the House. To you, honorable members, fall the grave and weighty responsibility of making new laws, amending existing ones, checking the work of government through questions to ministers, debating government spending, government policy, and issues of national importance. The ruling party enacts laws for the peace, order, and good governance of Belize. The opposition holds the government to account. To the speaker falls the responsibility of maintaining order in a fair and balanced manner, being neither too lax nor excessively strict or sensitive, but rather carefully navigating the boundary between on the one hand freedom of expression and on the other hand indecorous descent into indignity. So I am under no illusion about the challenges of the office, but I'm equally confident that we can all agree when there is disagreement, no matter how heated, how passionate, honorable members will do so with respect for each other and for the truth. There should, I hope, be no need to call on the police orderlies to escort any member outside of this house, or to have any honorable member feel it necessary to don a hard hat in the confines of the house. We want to encourage Belizeans at home and in the diaspora to be engaged in the business of the house, their business, to tune in and not be turned off. We want our young Belizeans to not only visit the House, but to be inspired to become Parliament, to become parliamentarians. We recognize that the media plays an indispensable role in the democratic process. To them, we say that this is an open and welcoming House, provided the rules are respected. What the public sees, whether on television or social media, is not the half of it. There is an engine room which is not seen. This enables the National Assembly to operate at full tilt. This would not be possible without the dedicated staff of the National Assembly. This is led by a committed clerk and a deputy clerk. I look forward to meeting 
knowing and working with the National Assembly staff and working with you, honorable members, through the staff committee to ensure that their concerns are heard and acted upon. I thank my predecessor, former Speaker Laura Longsworth, for giving generously of her time and sharing her experiences with me. Over the past two days, I have received a flood of texts and comments. Perhaps flood is not the most appropriate word at this time. A lot of comments. It is clear that many people think the way members have carried on leaves much to be desired. Honorable members, with a new parliament comes new hope. Let us resolve from both sides of the house to discharge our duties with integrity, honorably, and with respect, and in so doing, fulfill the hope and aspirations of the Belizean people. Finally, as we've heard the sad news today, we should never tire of hearing it, these words, that we are in the grips of a pandemic. We wear our masks, we practice physical distancing, and we sanitize our hands. And we are responsible for our actions as we move around. I thank you. Election of a Deputy Speaker. Madam Speaker, I propose to the House, the Honorable Marconi um, Leal, as a Deputy Speaker, Speaker of the House of Representatives. Second denomination. Honorable Members, I declare Honorable Marconi Leal as Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oath of Allegiance. What I will do is to do the one for the Madam Speaker, followed by the Deputy Speaker, and then with the rest of the members, we'll all do the oath together. Okay. Proceed, Madam Speaker. I, I, Valerie Woods, do swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to Belize and will uphold the Constitution and the law, and that I will conscientiously, impartially, and to the best of my ability, discharge my duties as the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and do right to all manner of people without fear of favor, affection, or ill will. So help me God. I, I Marconi Leal, do swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to Belize, and I will uphold the Constitution and the law, and that I will conscientiously, impartially, and to the best of my ability, discharge my duties 
as a member of the House of Representatives and do right to all manner of people without fear and favor, affection and or with ill will. So help me God. All of us can now stand, honorable members, honorable members can now stand as you take your oath. Let us let us begin. One, two, three. I, Abner Abner Perez, do swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the peace. I will uphold the constitution and the law, and that I will conscientiously, impartially, and to the best of my ability, discharge my duties as a member of the House of Representatives, and do right to all manner of people without fear or favor. Affection or anything, so help me God. Can you kindly leave them right in the folder signed? We will pick them up later on. Thank you very much. I now call on the bishop to lead us in prayer. May we kindly stand. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, keep our country under your merciful care, that being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. We humbly beseech you that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will and you with the spirit of wisdom our governor general sir colville young our prime minister the honorable john Bersenio, the leader of the opposition the honorable patrick farber and to all elected and appointed officials and those in authority wisdom and strength to act in accordance with your will Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve your people without fear or favor. Defend our liberties and fashion us into one united people as together we celebrate our cultural and religious diversity. Save us from violence, discord and confusion, from pride and arrogance and from every evil way. May justice and peace prevail in our land and grant that through our obedience to your law we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. Bless our people with honorable industry, song learning, and pure manners. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness and in the day of trouble, even now in the midst of the devastating effects of this COVID-19 pandemic, and as we pause to remember our brother, David Vega, let us never suffer, let, let our trust never suffer, and our faith in you to stand firm. We make these our petitions in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who through Jesus Christ has revealed your glory to all nations, Please protect and preserve Belize, our beloved country. God of might, wisdom, and justice, please assist our Belizean government and people with your Holy Spirit of counsel and fortitude. Let the light of your divine wisdom direct their plans and endeavors so that with your help we may attain our just objectives. With your guidance, may all our endeavors tend to peace, social justice, liberty, national happiness, the increase of industry, sobriety, and useful knowledge. We pray, O God of mercy, for all of us, that we may be blessed in the knowledge and sanctified in the observance of your most holy law, that we may be preserved in union and in that peace which the world itself cannot give. And after drawing the blessings of this life, please admit us, dear Lord, to that eternal reward, 
that you have prepared for those who love you. Amen. Announcement by the speaker. Honorable members, as you are all aware, His Excellency, the Governor General, has been invited to attend this first sitting of the House today in order to deliver the government speech. It is not necessary for me to remind you that it is the undoubted right of the House to exclude all persons from its proceedings. And I must be guided by the will of the House, whose servant I am now. Is it the will of the House that His Excellency should be admitted when he seeks entry to the House? All those in favor, kindly say aye. aye. Those against, kindly say no. I think the ayes have it. It is customary on the occasion of the reading of the government speech to invite the senators to attend the proceedings. If this is in accordance with your will, the clerk of the house will be directed to convey to the honorable president and other senators a cordial invitation in your name that they should attend in order to hear the government speech. Is it your will? All those in favor, kindly say aye. Aye. Those against, kindly say no. I think the ayes have it. I will announce the arrival of the Governor General.
Kindly be seated. Madam Speaker of the House of Representatives, Madam President of the Senate, Honorable Members of the House of Representatives and the Senate, Madam Chief Justice and other Justices of the Supreme Court and Court of Appeal, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, Your Worship, the Most Reverend Larry Nicasio, Bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Belize, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to open this new session of the National Assembly following the general elections of the 11th of November 2020, where my government won a platform to build a Belize that works for everyone and where everybody fit win. The ambitious plan Belize is bold and seeks to put people back to work by creating good jobs roll out NHL for all, make education relevant and free from preschool to junior college, and make home ownership a reality for thousands of Belizeans. This kind of progressive plan comes in at a time when, it, when many Belizeans are facing difficult times with hardships that truly test our resilience. From the raging COVID-19 pandemic to three storms and one of the worst flooding in decades, our grit has been tested. No more so than with the dreaded novel coronavirus, which has already taken too many lives, disrupted and displaced too many families, and wreaked havoc on an economy that was already undergoing recession. No Belizean wanted any of this, but all Belizeans know that to overcome the challenges of this time will require all of us working together to turn things wrong in our nation. It starts with changing behavior and adapting to the safety measures being put in place to help us better manage this pandemic. As good citizens, our immediate task is to wear our face masks in public, wash our hands regularly, and show our love for each other by keeping to the physical distancing rules put out by the Ministry of Health. <coughs> when we do these things, we will not just be helping ourselves, but also our frontline workers who have been working so tirelessly each day. We owe all of them our gratitude 
from the doctors, nurses, ambulance drivers, to the security services personnel, sanitation workers, and all those who go out every day to serve on the front lines. We must work together to try and manage the spread of the virus while we wait for a vaccine that will be safe and effective. But until then, we have to be vigilant and do our part so that we can save lives. Already, we have suffered too much grief and sadness, and we mourn with all those families who have lost loved ones to this dreaded virus. For the ninth time since independence, political leaders have come together at the ceremonial opening of Parliament to set forth the agenda of a new administration in the hope of building a better and more prosperous nation. The agenda of this new administration The agenda of this new administration promises to work towards four ambition, ambitious goals. Reducing poverty by half in 10 years, cutting the trade deficit by half in 10 years, working towards full employment for women and young people, strengthening families, and in so doing, reducing poverty and ensuring better citizen security. These goals seek to reduce poverty. Sorry, these goals seek to provide Belizeans with a better citizen security. These believes in access to a decent jobs, our children, a goal, a good education, promises ever for everyone. Excuse me, I should really keep this on, but with the permission of the Prime Minister and Cabinet, I will excuse myself from my mask. These goals seek to provide Belizeans with a Bill of Rights that promises every Belizean access to a decent job, our children a good education, for every Belizean access to a piece of land, adequate health care for all, safer communities, and the chance to have a decent roof over their heads. For my government, the work ahead is to educate for the future, strengthen and diversify the economy in the wake of the global COVID-19 pandemic, work towards eliminating poverty and crime in our communities, 
and strengthen the trust we put in our public institutions. We will bolster development in the countryside by including our rural communities in the national picture and enhance our nationalism through the promotion of our cultural and ethnic diversity and protect and preserve our beautiful natural resources. The COVID-19 pandemic. The social, economic and political impact of COVID-19 has and continues to be devastating economically and socially. Already this pandemic has taken more than 175 lives, caused more than 65,000 Belizeans to file for unemployment benefits, shut down many small businesses, brought the tourism industry to its knees, and is keeping our children out of school. Sadly, there is no real plan to address the devastating consequences, and instead, the previous administration was borrowing $1 million a day, notwithstanding the already dire financial conditions. This PUP administration will not allow this to continue. We know that our first responsibility is to do all possible to protect Belizeans from COVID-19, more so those most vulnerable. That is why our plan is to defeat COVID-19 and already we are improving surveillance and testing capacities, surge capacity for hospital services and institute nation, national health, public health measures for containment. My government will continue to be there for everyone and we want Belizeans to take care of each other. My government has already invested over $15 million to turn things around and to help us win this war against the coronavirus and get us to the day when a vaccine will be readily available and affordable. Economic recovery. Of course, side by side with the health crisis caused by COVID-19 is the economic crisis. Today, too many Belizeans who want to work can't find a job and can't meet the day-to-day -day expenses of taking care of their families. This is hardest on the close to 50% of our population who are considered poor and cannot meet their basic needs. As more Belizeans fall below the poverty line, the situation worsens. For my government, the path forward requires nothing less than a complete transformation of our nation, starting with redefining the role of government and how we use the people's resources. This will require not just a more transparent and accountable government, but one that is people-centered and people-driven. We must dedicate our efforts to reducing poverty, bring about economic transformation, and ensure greater citizen security. 
Our first priority will be to rebuild the Belizean economy. Our plan, Belize, is focused on stimulating the economy to create more than 50,000 jobs by providing incentives for employers to rehire former employees. We will fast track a stimulus project. We will fast track a stimulus package, pass legislation to protect businesses from failing, and work with the business community and unions to reform our outdated Labor Act. My government will also introduce measures to reduce home and property losses and business closures. A public-private economic recovery tax task force will be immediately established to meet on a regular and continuing basis to make recommendations to Cabinet on economic recovery action items. The success of our economic plan will result in the continuation of unemployment relief to qualified person persons through the COVID-19 crisis bring back private sector investment, drive our economy, economy back to growth, establish a better public-private investment partnership, engineer substantial interest rate reduction, and usher in an era of digital transformation. The success of our programs will recover in an increase of the minimum wage to to five dollars an hour, employer tax credits for agriculture, business and low profit margin firms and uplift our standard of living. We will recover stronger, bounce back better than before, and restore confidence. We believe the time has come for our nation to rebound, renew, plant, grow, and reap. To this end, we will develop a national food safety plan that will see a strengthened Belize School of Agriculture so that we can develop hundreds of new farmers using new technology to advance our industri agricultural industry. To increase more agricultural production Government will review the tax system with a view to implement reforms, implement in research, invest in research, and develop so that we can better prevent pests and disease and do all possible to work with farmers, big and small alike, increase production in traditional and non-traditional products. With the blue economy, government will embrace innovative and environmentally sustainable fishing technique, techniques, provide financing to add value to fishing products for local consumption and export and ensure sustainable harvest fishing. 
in forestry, government will promote reforestation projects, programs, establish and support community-based organizations to promote value adding to our unique forestry products and re protect our forest reserves. For us, tourism must benefit Belize and all Belizeans. We must all love where we live and build a tourist industry that is sustainable. To this end, my government will establish a COVID-19 recovery fund, invest heavily in tourism-related infrastructure, provide hospitality training, increase the number of well-trained tourism police, bring more flights to Belize, modernize our transport system, and, re and facilitate our new airport and port facilities. A stronger and fairer nation Plan Belize, <coughs> excuse me. Plan Belize is about people. At the heart of my government's agenda is the upliftment of the lives of every Belizean. To accomplish this, we will focus on families. We will believe. We believe strong families make for greater communities that lead to a better nation. To strengthen families and help them become more productive, my government will expand skills training, depoliticize social programs like the food assistance and cash transfer programs, develop access to healthy activities, provide mentoring and counseling programs, youth leadership, and better participation in advocacy and self-reliance, and we will roll out NHI for every Belizean man, woman, and child. It is our firm belief that healthier choices lead to less diseases and longer lives so that we can significantly reduce mortality rates and the prevalence of non-communicable diseases. To this end, my government will work tirelessly to improve care for diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, mental health illnesses, cancer, and we will decrease the prevalence of dengue and HIV. With a poverty rate of 50%, we are a breeding ground for crime. Arresting crime and guaranteeing national security must occur so that our people can once again feel safe in their home and safe in the streets. To this end, my government will increase the Belize Police Department, provide adequate training for police officers, promote police reform, 
modernize the department and strengthen the law. My government will disband the GSU, demilitarize the police department and introduce more effective measures to suppress gangs. At the same time, government must nurture the national principles and dignity to public, to public life by delivering justice fairly and swiftly by an independent judiciary working with all the necessary tools and equipment to deliver justice. We will empower our Belizean women so that they can enjoy greater access to affordable and quality health care services, create economic opportunities by increasing women's access to affordable land and housing, and we will end the kinds of discrimination that sees women earning less for doing the same job as men. We will promote women in science and technology, engineering and mathematics, ensure equitable participation of women in leadership and governance, and expend measures to ensure the safety and security of women. My government will fulfill our promise to provide free education from preschool to junior college, ensure universal preschool education, establish a teacher tr learning institute so that we can achieve 100% trained teachers, roll out our standard four to fourth form digital device, and ensure that our children in rural communities have access to the same quality of education service as your children in urban communities. Our plan for education is holistic and our team will reimagine education, accelerate positive change in education and learning. It's about time we focus our energies on youth mobilization, cultural libera libera liberation, and make sports better. And for this reason, my government will triple the youth budget so that young Belizeans will have better access to quick microfinancing and that our youth at risk can have access to expanded education and can find employment. Likewise, we will expand the sports curriculum, introduce more physical education, support semi-pro sports, and restore pride in our national teams. Our Belizean right is our birthright, and as such, every citizen should own a piece of land. For this reason, my government will prioritize for first-time land ownership for women and young families. Our rural, our rural farmers will have access to fertile farmlands, and we will guarantee land tenure so that our families will build a decent home. 
To do this, our government will establish a national housing cooperation to drive major housing development across the country by building 10,000 low-income homes over the next five years. Good governance. All our plans and programs hinge on good governance. This administration sees stopping cooperation as a national priority. For this reason, my government will engage in the strengthening and reform of all governance institutions, reform the Finance and Audit Reform Act to strengthen the system of budgeting and spending public monies. Likewise, my government will enact campaign finance reform to regulate the timing of elections and campaigning. Government will promote and enforce accountability in government through legislative reform, a more autonomous public service, and a strong public accounts committee. No one is above the law, and to this end, government will empower the Integrity Commission and insist that political leaders file returns going back to 2012. This administration will ensure timely audit of public accounts, end the culture of public scandals and fire sale of government assets, and embark on a comprehensive reform of all existing legislation to eliminate the exercise of ministerial discretion. My government is fully aware that Plan, uh, plan Belize is ambitious. Take together this plan will determine how we rebuild and restore this nation. For this administration, this plan is bold because we are not living in ordinary times. The core values of the People's United Party to serve the people is at the center of what has been laid out for you today. It will not be easy to build a more resilient, safer, and better Belize, but we have to try. Conclusion. Members of the National Assembly and the Senate, the Belizean people are depending on you to get this nation back on track to develop a strong COVID-19 response, to pass laws for the good governance of the nation, to spend the people's money fairly and equitably, and to work together to build a Belize that works, to, works for everyone where everybody fit in. Long live Belize, que viva Belize, God bless you, and God bless, bless Belize. I thank you.
A moment of silence. Members of the house, invited guests, we stand in a moment of silence for Honorable David Dido Vega, member for Corazal Bay. Statement by Minister. I acknowledge the Honorable Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, Economic Development and Investment. Madam Speaker, I also ask your indulgence of your host and the Senate to take off my mask when I speak. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker of the House of Representatives, Madam Speaker of the Senate, Honorable Members of the House of Representatives and the Senate, Madam Chief Justice, of the Supreme Court and Courts of Appeals, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Consular Corps, Your Worship, the Most Reverend Philip Wright, Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Belize, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Belizeans. It is with a sad heart that I inform the nation of the passing this morning of the Honorable David Dido Vega. David, known to us as Dido, would have been swearing the same oath as we did earlier. On behalf 
of all of us. I extend to his family, to the people of Corazal B, and to the nation, our heartfelt condolences to the Honorable David Vega's family. The Honorable David Vega will be given an, a state um, funeral and all flags will be flown at half mass over the entire country until the date of his funeral. We gather this morning in Bamapan on Independence Hill to participate in a ceremony steeped in tradition. Ceremonial openings of the National Assembly have been held nine times since independence on 21st September 1981. These proceedings with the attendant pomp and ceremony are an important symbol of Belizean governance a democratic Central American nation in the heart of the Caribbean basin. The Belize Constitution proclaims as a foundational principle that we believe that the will of the people shall form the basis of government in a democratic society in which the government is freely elected by universal adult suffrage and in which all persons may to the extent of their capacity, play some part in institutions of national life and thus develop and maintain due respect for lawfully constituted authority. We do not only believe this, not only is this an article of faith for Belizeans, we live it. On the 11th November 2020, quietly, at physical distance, with minds made up. Malaysians joined lines across this beautiful jewel of ours. Of the 182,815 registered voters, 149,650 electors went to the polls. A remarkable 81.86% um, of those entitled to elect those um, to elect representatives risked contracting the dreaded COVID-19 virus and solemnly exercised their right. They voted. That secret act marking a mark on a ballot is the ultimate act of people's power. I stand here proud but humble as the leader of the People's United Party whose candidates collectively received 88,040 votes or 58.83% of all votes cast. Therefore, the government I lead has been given a strong and unquestioned mandate to implement <laughs> plan belief. Before the nation, the elected representatives took their oath. Each of us swore true faith and allegiance to Belize. We swore to uphold the Constitution and the law and to do right to all manner of people without fear or favor, affection or ill will. We accept this obligation to be honest, to be fair, to do right and above all, to serve the people according to law. Belizeans demand a new commitment to decent and honest public service, and Belize deserves no less. We, as duly elected servants of the people, must rise to this challenge. I pledge 
in the name of all elected representatives of the People's United Party and Senators to remain faithful to our oaths. As former President Barack Obama said, if the people cannot trust their government to do the job for which it exists, to protect them and to promote their common welfare, all else is lost. Our nation, not yet 40 years old, has never confronted a year as disastrous as 2020. Without exaggeration, 2020 has been a living hell. Sadly, 183 of us have lost their lives to COVID-19. 8,805 persons have tested positive. These include frontline workers, security forces, healthcare workers, and others who risk their lives in service to our people. To their loved ones, we offer our deepest condolences and gratitude for their exemplary service. We are urging Belizeans and companies to adopt a frontline worker. Companies can adopt a frontline worker instead of having a Christmas party. This will be coordinated by the Ministry of Health. By any measure, we are facing a healthcare crisis, a national emergency. Our healthcare system is overwhelmed and the virus continues to spread apace. In response to the unprecedented emergency, drastic measures were implemented, including a national lockdown and other measures to contain the spread. Let's face the facts. The stubborn truth is that so far, the measures have failed. The promise of a vaccine alone is not the answer to a present problem. Your government has acted decisively. Testing has been dramatically scaled up. We have introduced rapid testing at all community and regional hospitals and at polyclinics. We will be rolling out additional fixed testing sites and mobile testing services across the country. To wage war against this virus, we need to identify those who are positive so that they know their status and are able to isolate. My government recognizes that when we isolate people, we cannot abandon them. Therefore, we will be providing a minimum of 14 days food supplies and a stipend to assist families in need. An MOU has been signed with Baja to assist with PCR testing. Equipment and consumables have been sourced, which will allow us to reduce the waiting time for PCR results. We are investing in additional human resources, doctors, nurses, public health inspectors, lab technicians. Government is also looking at the overtime earned by our frontline workers that was denied by the previous administration. But it is time for a reality check. Approximately 39,000 Belizeans lost their jobs due to COVID-19. This is on top of the almost 20,000 persons that were already unemployed prior to the onset of the pandemic. As of September 2020, over 64,000 Belizeans, or almost 30% of the entire labor force, remained unemployed with an additional 82,000 individuals underemployed. In other words, roughly 146,000 Belizeans, or 67.6% of the labor force, are either unemployed or underemployed and looking for work. Almost 44% of the employed workforce works less than 40 hours per week. These numbers are shocking and entirely unacceptable. 
The abnormally high level of unemployment is attributable to the prolonged economic crisis we're experiencing. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, Belize was already in the throes of a year-long recession. In the first quarter of 2020, prior to COVID, the Belizean economy contracted 4.5%. It contracted by 23.3% in the second and afforded 13.2% in the third quarter. Over the first nine months of this year, Belize's GDP declined by $316.2 million, or 14.4%, compared to 2019. While the economy has been mired, mired in this depressive state, the government's hands have been tied by the massive public sector debt loan. Prior to COVID, Belize's public sector debt was already approaching 100% of the country's GDP. Since COVID, this debt has skyrocketed unsustainably to around 133% of GDP. For the last nine months, we have been borrowing on average almost $1 million a day to cover operations. From April to September 2020, government's fiscal deficit has widened by over $110 million due to severe revenue shortfalls, approaching $150 million combined with incongruent reduction of expenditures by less than $35 million. The effect is that our income per capita in real terms has shriveled to 1992 levels, but our debt has ballooned to unsustainable levels. This is untenable. We are constantly reviewing the COVID-19 threat to our way of life and will take all measures, however drastic, to contain the spread. No doubt new measures will be necessary. We have a sacred duty to preserve life, we will discharge our duty. Winston Churchill said, I never worry about action, but only about inaction. Belizeans, now more than ever, it is time for action. We must summon the courage to fight and defeat this pandemic. Through personal action, each and every one of us must act responsibly. We must wear masks properly at all times. We must wash our hands repeatedly. We must get tested. We must isolate and quarantine when advised by medical practitioners. And we are appealing to all to resist the temptation of God gathering in large numbers during the holidays. The healing of our nation caused each of us to act. We must act now. On the 9th September this year, Hurricane Nana made landfall between Dangriga and Placencia. It caused serious damage to property in southern Belize. If that was not enough, torrential rains associated with Hurricane Eta drenched Belize for days in the first week of November. The Stan Creek, Cayo, and Belize districts were heavily impacted by excessive rainfalls between 10 and 20 inches. On 15 November 2020, Nemo advised about the formation of Hurricane um, Lutter, which brought with it rainfall across Belize, amounting to 10 to 12 inches. Residents living in flood-prone areas experience damages and losses to their homes, households effects, crops, watermelons, melon, cucumbers, tomatoes, sweet pepper, corn, beans, pumpkins, cabbage, jalapenos, assorted fruits, to name a few. 
We're experiencing a critical shortage of beans which forced us to authorize importation of black and red kidney beans. Productive areas mostly affected were agricultural communities in and along the Mopan, Macau, and the Belize River. This flooding negatively impacted the livelihoods of 787 producers, mostly rural families. Grain and vegetable, vegetable commodities were mostly affected for a combined lost value of over $12 million. Total losses to the agricultural sector is estimated at $18.2 million, resulting in the destruction of approximately 12,000 992 acres of agricultural crops. Cumulatively, approximately 1,200 families or 6,000 persons were impacted by floodwaters. Farmers have reported losses on approximately 600 acres thus far. The numbers may increase as some areas are still inaccessible due to flooding conditions. NEMO has ass assessed on a preliminary basis, and I stress preliminary, losses at an estimated $93 million. And this does not account for the losses caused by the droughts that we experience. The 2020 hurricane season was the most active on record. The droughts we have experienced are part of our new normal. Too much rain and too little rain. Climate change is real and it is cruel. The science is clear. The State of the Caribbean Climate Report produced by the Climate Studies Group of the University of West Indies has set out in detail the dire trends that have emerged. The Caribbean as a whole will gradually dry through to the end of the century. The regional climate model projects up to 25 to 30 percent less rainfall by the end of the century. The experts say that the Caribbean region will be 17 percent drier by the end of the century. There, are an increasing, there is an increasing trend in very warm days and nights for the Caribbean as a whole. Regional, model, regional models suggest an increase in mean temperatures of up to four degrees. Of course, sea surface temperatures are expected to continue to rise. Simultaneously, we will experience a rise in sea levels. Remarkab remarkably, our experts predict that sea levels will reach or exceed one meter across the Caribbean. These the statistics speak truth to us. We must respond and respond urgently. We have created the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management to signal my government's commitment to driving an ambitious agenda to address the urgent need to change the way we live. To make my point clear, I can, do, I can do no better than to quote His Excellency Antonio Gutierrez, the Secretary General of the United Nations. He said, making peace with nature is the defining task of the 21st century. It must be the top, top priority for everyone, everywhere. In this context, the recovery from the pandemic is an opportunity. We can see rays of hope in the form of a vaccine, but there is no vaccine for the planet. Nature needs a bailout. In overcoming the pandemic, we can also avert climate classicism and restore our planet. This is an epic policy test. But Ultimately, 
This is a moral test. The trillions of dollars needed for COVID recovery is money that we are borrowing from future generations. Every last penny. We cannot use these resources to lock in policies that burden them with a mountain of debt on a broken planet. It is time to flick the green switch. We have a chance to not simply reset the world economy, but to transform it. A sustainable economy driven by renewable energies will create new jobs, cleaner infrastructure, and a resilient future. An inclusive world will help ensure that people can enjoy better health and the full respect of their human rights and live with dignity on a healthy planet. COVID recovery and our planet's repair must be the two sides of the same coin, end of quote. The Secretary General spoke for us. He spoke with humanity. We agree. My fellow Belizeans, with a heavy heart, I have been frank with you. Make no mistake, I have not exaggerated the precarious position we are in. These threats are existential. We face extraordinary and unprecedented challenges. A truly national effort is required for us to emerge from this dark place. We will, we can, we must. To show our commitment to a national effort, my cabinet will take a 10% salary cut effective 1st January. <clears throat> I have absolute faith in the strength of the Belizean people. Together, as Belizeans, we will rebound, we will rebuild, and we will restore this beautiful jewel. That is our sacred duty. Después de una victoria contundente en las elecciones recientes, nos toca hoy forjar una gran nación resiliente ante todo lo que vive nuestro pueblo, peor aún con los afectos devastadores de la pandemia. Hoy somos un pueblo abatido por el desgaste de este virus, una economía erosionada y un pueblo agotado por la lucha constante de nuestra gente. Pero como dijo el economista del Banco Mundial, forjar resiliencia ante las perturbaciones naturales es un objetivo fundamental a largo plazo. Los desastres naturales no son nuevos para este país. Siempre hemos logrado rebotar y seguir nuestro camino siempre con la mirada hacia adelante, con una visión y convicción de que saldremos adelante. El compromiso de nuestro gobierno sigue firme. Saldremos de estas, aunque poco a poco lo haremos. Como dice, o como canta Vicente Fernández en la canción El Rey, él dice... No hay que llegar primero, pero hay que saber llegar. Además, no hay que postergar hoy la tarea que se nos prepara para la mañana. As we get ready to mark the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, I ask us to have uppermost in our minds those among us who are most in need. Let us open our hearts and let, and let those of us who have share with those who have not. I still believe our best days are ahead of us. 
I believe in our collective determination to be our best selves. And yes, I'm convinced that together and with the guidance of our Creator, we will build a Belize that works for everyone. Long live Belize. Que viva Belize. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Motion relating to the business or sitting of the House. I acknowledge the Honorable Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, Economic Development and Investment. Madam Speaker, I move that at this rising today, the House adjourn to a date to be fixed by the Speaker. Honorable Members, the question is that the House at its rising today adjourn to a date to be fixed by the Speaker. All those in favor, kindly say aye. aye. Those against, kindly say no. I think the ayes have it. I acknowledge the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Economic Development and Investment. Madam Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn. Honorable Members, before I put the question for the adjournment, I would like to ask all our invited guests to kindly remain seated so we can allow four Honorable Members to exit this venue for their next official engagement. Thereafter, I kindly ask of you all to leave your seats in an orderly fashion and adhere to the physical distancing protocols. Honorable Members, the question is that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor, kindly say aye. aye. Those against, kindly say no. I think the ayes have it. The House now stands adjourned. Photos. Right? Yes, right downstairs. Thank you.